Section. Introduction. We're seeing a surge of interest in multimodal large language models, MLLMs, in the research community, as we strive towards achieving artificial general intelligence, AGI. These models leverage the power of large language models, LLMs, to align different modes of information, like vision and language. This allows MLLMs to perform impressive tasks, such as providing a detailed description of an image. However, these models aren't perfect. Sometimes, they generate descriptions that don't match the image, a phenomenon we call hallucination. This can happen at two levels. The object level, where the model claims there are objects in the image that aren't there, and the attribute level, where the model inaccurately describes an object's characteristics. These hallucinations pose significant challenges to the practical use of MLLMs. To address this, researchers have typically used a method called instruction tuning. They've noticed that MLLMs are more likely to hallucinate when generating longer text, leading to different strategies to solve the problem. For instance, one method, LRV instruction, limits the length of the instruction data, resulting in less hallucination but also less detailed descriptions. Another method, VIGC, uses a multi-step generation scheme and iteratively updates the visual features with the textual context, reducing hallucinations but at the cost of generative efficiency. Both these methods are data and computation intensive. We're proposing a different approach that directly corrects hallucinations without the need for retraining. Our training free framework, called Woodpecker, takes the text generated by MLLMs and the input image and carefully corrects the text while providing evidence for the corrections, such as bounding boxes. This adds a level of interpretability and reliability to MLLMs, allowing for easy visual fact checking. Our framework works in five stages. 1. Key concept extraction identifies the main objects mentioned in the generated sentences. 2. Question formulation asks questions about the extracted objects, such as their number and attributes. 3. Visual knowledge validation answers the formulated questions using expert models, like a visual perception model to determine the object number. 4. Visual claim generation converts the question answer pairs into a visual knowledge base which includes object level and attribute level claims about the image. 5. Hallucination correction modifies the hallucinations and adds the corresponding evidence by the visual knowledge base. Each step in this process is clear and transparent, providing good interpretability. We've tested our method on the Pope, Me, and LLAVAQA90 datasets, and the results show that it's highly effective. For example, on the Pope benchmark, our method significantly improved the accuracy of the baseline MINIGPT4 MPLUG OWL from 54.67%, 62% to 85.33%, 86.33%. In summary, our main contributions are, we've proposed a training-free framework, Woodpecker, to correct hallucinations in MLLMs. As far as we know, we're the first to use a corrective approach to tackle the visual hallucination problem. Our framework is designed to be clear and transparent, providing good interpretability. We've thoroughly tested our method, and the significant improvements show its potential in hallucination correction. Recently, there's been a growing focus on the hallucination phenomenon in MLLMs, as it directly impacts their reliability. Current research mainly focuses on two areas, evaluation, detection and mitigation of hallucinations. Previous work has either trained a model to identify hallucinations or check the output text against the correct answers to see if hallucination has occurred. For mitigation, previous work has focused on improving the data collection process and the training scheme. LRV instruction uses negative instances to avoid overconfidence and strictly controls the text length of the correct answers, based on the observation that shorter responses are less likely to hallucinate. Similarly, VIGC uses an iterative process, generating and adding short answers each time, to ensure accuracy without losing detail. While previous work has tried to develop MLLMs with fewer hallucinations, our main goal is to improve the responses of MLLMs by modifying the hallucinated parts. We've designed a training-free framework that uses existing models, avoiding the complexity of collecting instruction data and resource-intensive training. As a result, our framework can be easily integrated with various MLLMs, serving as a general plug-and-play module. Section Summary Multimodal large language models, MLLMs, have the capability to describe the contents of an image, 
but they often suffer from hallucinations, where they generate inconsistent descriptions. Existing methods for mitigating hallucinations are data and computation intensive, but our proposed framework, Woodpecker, directly corrects hallucinations without retraining. It incorporates a five-stage pipeline that extracts key concepts, formulates questions, validates visual knowledge, generates visual claims, and corrects hallucinations, providing interpretability and reliability. Experimental results demonstrate the effectiveness of our method in improving accuracy and correcting hallucinations in MLLMs. Section. Knowledge Augmented LLM. We're exploring how to enhance language learning models, LLMs, by incorporating external knowledge. This is a natural progression from previous research, which has focused on using knowledge to correct factual inaccuracies in LLMs. Our approach is similar but we're applying it to the field of vision language, which presents its own unique challenges. For instance, while text-based models can easily retrieve relevant knowledge, this isn't as straightforward for image text pairs. Our focus is on reducing visual hallucinations, rather than factual inaccuracies. To do this, we're developing a strategy to build a structured visual knowledge base that's dependent on the image in the query. We're also looking at how to address both object-level and attribute-level hallucinations in a systematic way. Our work is closely related to the LLM-aided visual reasoning model. The idea here is to use the strong reasoning and instruction following capabilities of LLMs to assist with vision or multimodal tasks. In our case, we're using these capabilities to help with key concept extraction, question formulation, and hallucination correction. Our goal is to identify and correct hallucinations in the responses generated by multimodal language learning models, MLLMs. The main challenges are pinpointing the hallucinations and determining the facts, which we then organize in a structured way for final correction. We've broken down the process into five steps. Key concept extraction, question formulation, visual knowledge validation, visual claim generation, and hallucination correction. The first step is to extract key concepts from the generated sentence. We do this by identifying the main objects mentioned in the sentence which are the ones most likely to be associated with visual hallucinations. For example, if the sentence is, the man is wearing a black hat, we would extract, man, and, hat, as the key concepts. Once we have the key concepts, we formulate a series of questions around them to diagnose the hallucinations. These questions target both object-level and attribute-level hallucinations. For object-level hallucinations, we ask questions like, is there any, object, in the image? How many are there? For attribute level hallucinations, we ask questions like, what is object doing? Or, what color is the object? The next step is to validate the visual knowledge. For object level questions, we determine the existence and count of a certain object. For attribute level questions, we use a pre trained visual question answering, VQA, model to answer the questions based on the image. The VQA model tends to generate shorter answers with fewer hallucinations, making it a reasonable choice. Section Summary Knowledge augmented LLMs have been used to alleviate factual hallucinations in language models by using relevant knowledge as background information. In this work, the authors extend this idea to the vision language field by constructing a structured visual knowledge base conditioned on the image and query, and addressing both object-level and attribute-level hallucinations. They break down the process into five subtasks. Key concept extraction, question formulation, visual knowledge validation, visual claim generation, and hallucination correction. Section. Visual claim generation. We're going to explain how we generate visual claims after we've asked and answered questions. We take these question-answer pairs and turn them into visual claims, which we then organize into a visual knowledge base. This base is used for reference in the next step. The visual knowledge base is structured in two ways. 1. Object-level claims. This information helps to reduce object-level hallucinations. It includes details about the number of key objects extracted from sentences. For objects that exist, we make a claim like, there are x number of y, where x is the count and y is the name of a certain object. For objects that don't exist, we use a similar template, there is no y. The count information comes from the object detection in the previous step. 2. Attribute level claims. These include specific details about each object to help reduce attribute level hallucinations. 
Typical attributes include positions, colors, actions, etc. We use a model to turn questions and answers into claims. To deal with cases involving multiple objects or the relationship between foreground objects and the background, we include claims that involve the interaction between different objects or the objects in the background. For example, the cat is lying next to the dog. Next, we use the visual claims to guide a language model to correct hallucinations in the generated responses. After combining the visual knowledge base with the original responses into a prompt, we instruct the language model to correct the responses and output the refined ones. For better understanding, we instruct the language model to attach bounding boxes right behind expressions when referring to objects. This design helps to match the mentioned entities in the responses with object instances in the image, which provides an easy way to check the reliability of the output. We use the Pope dataset to evaluate hallucinations of multimodal language models. It contains settings of random, popular, and adversarial sampling, which mainly differ in the way negative samples are constructed. For the random setting, the objects not presented in the image are sampled randomly, while for the popular setting, non-existent objects are sampled from a pool of objects with the highest frequencies. For the adversarial setting, objects that most frequently co-occur but do not exist in the image are sampled. We sample 50 images and build 6 questions for each image. The ratio between positive and negative samples is balanced, namely 50% vs 50%. This setup transforms object annotations into a series of yes or no questions and focuses on evaluating the object level hallucination, and more specifically, the existence aspect. We also use the Mi benchmark to evaluate the performance of multimodal language models in various aspects. It includes 10 subtasks for the perception ability and 4 subtasks for the cognition ability. In this paper, we repurpose the dataset and select existence and count subsets to measure the object level hallucination. The position and color subsets are used to measure the attribute level hallucination. LLAVAQA90 is also used to evaluate multimodal language models. Specifically, we sample 10 description type queries that are paraphrased in various forms to instruct a model to describe an image, such as, describe the following image. And, what is the photo about? For our baseline models, we choose mainstream multimodal language models, including MPLUGAL. LLAVA, MINIGPT4, and Otter. These four models follow a vision encoder interface language model architecture and are trained on image text pairs. Our pipeline is training free and comprises three pre trained models apart from the model to be corrected. We choose the language model, GPT 3.5 Turbo, to fulfill the subtasks of key concept extraction, question formulation, and hallucination correction. For open set object detection, we use grounding Dino to extract object counting information with default detection thresholds. Moreover, we utilize Blip2 Flant 514 number 14XXL as the VQA model to answer the attribute related questions conditioned on the input image. For the yes or no questions, we find that the instruction following ability of some models is somewhat weak, often outputting irrelevant text such as pure emojis or URLs. This is an obstacle to our correction process. Besides, some models only output a single yes or no, which also poses a challenge to the correction. To deal with these issues, we design two simple measures. One, we first extract keywords i, e, yes, and no from the responses as the answers, then combine the questions with the answers into more specific claims. For example, given a question, is there a dog in the image? And a model answer, Yes. We compose a more specific answer as, yes, there is a dog in the image. 2. We additionally feed the questions to the language model in the correction process so that the language model can have a better grasp of the context and task requirements. Section Summary. In this section, the authors describe the process of generating visual claims by combining question-answer pairs. These claims are organized into a visual knowledge base to address object-level and attribute-level hallucinations. They also introduce a correction step using a language model to refine the generated responses based on the visual claims. Additionally, the authors discuss the datasets used for evaluating hallucinations and the baseline models employed in their experiments. Section. Results on Pope. Dot. We've conducted tests on Pope under various conditions, including random, popular, and adversarial settings. 
The results are summarized in the table labeled Pope. From these results, we can see that MINIGPT4 struggles with object perception, particularly in determining whether an object is present or not. Its F1 score is only 43.33%, while other baseline models score over 70%. Two other models, MPLUG Owl and Otter, tend to be overly confident, as shown by their high yes rate. This overconfidence, combined with high recall and low precision, results in a relatively low F1 score. However, our model, Woodpecker, consistently outperforms the baselines in most metrics, indicating its effectiveness in correcting object level hallucinations. Specifically, Woodpecker improves the accuracy of MINIGPT4 by 30.66% and MPLUGL by 24.33%. In more challenging settings, such as popular and adversarial, all models show some degree of performance degradation. This is especially noticeable in stronger baselines like LLAVA, which shows a 9.33% and 12.67% accuracy drop in the popular and adversarial settings, respectively. This suggests that these models may not be fitting the training data correctly. For instance, the decline in the popular setting could be due to the long-tailed data distribution. In contrast, our correction method, which uses a robust expert vision model, shows strong stability and improves various metrics for the baselines, with all accuracies exceeding 80%. Particularly, our Woodpecker model significantly boosts the accuracy of MPLUG OWL from 56.33% to 81% in the adversarial setting. We also conducted experiments on me, which covers not only object level but also attribute level hallucination evaluation. The results are listed in the table labeled me. For object level evaluation, LLAVA and Otter perform well in determining the existence of objects, but struggle with more complex count queries. Our correction method significantly improves the scores, with gains ranging from plus 65 over LLAVA to plus 101.66 over MINIGPT4. For attribute level evaluation, the baseline models tend to perform poorly, suggesting they are more susceptible to attribute level hallucinations. For example, MINIGPT4 only scores 65 in the color split, and MPLUG OWL scores just 66.67. However, after applying our correction framework, these models show consistent and significant improvements, with MPLUG OWL score increasing by 78.33. We also conducted experiments on LLAVAQA90, which is more open-ended than the previous two experiments. Instead of just answering, yes or no, questions, the models are required to fully translate the input image into language. This requires a more comprehensive evaluation method. We propose to use GPT-4V, a recently released strong model, for evaluation. GPT-4 volts can directly receive the original response, the corrected ones, and most importantly, the input image. However, its web interface only supports manual operation and has strict usage limits, making the evaluation process labor-intensive. To evaluate the models, we devise two metrics. Accuracy, which measures whether the response accurately reflects the image content, and detailedness, which measures whether the response is rich in details. The scores of these two metrics are displayed in the table labeled GPT. Our method consistently outperforms the baseline models in both metrics. This suggests that our Woodpecker model can effectively correct hallucinations in model responses and add details to the response by introducing bounding box information. Section Summary In the experiments on Pope, MINIGPT4 showed weak perception capabilities in judging the existence of objects, with an F1 score of only 43.33%. Woodpecker, our correction method, consistently improved the performance of baselines, achieving a relative gain of 30.66% for MINIGPT4 and 24.33% for MPLUG OWL in accuracy. In the experiments on me, our correction method was particularly effective in improving object level and attribute level evaluations, with score gains ranging from plus 65 over LLAVA to plus 101.66 over MINIGPT4. Additionally, in the LLAVAQA90 experiment, our Woodpecker method consistently outperformed baseline MLLMs in terms of accuracy and detailedness, effectively correcting hallucinations in MLLM responses. Section Analysis of Framework Modules. Dot.
we're going to delve into the different components of our framework to better understand their individual roles and how they work together. To keep things simple and avoid confusion from the variation of multilingual language models, MLLMs, we've set up a basic test scenario using a default model that always responds with yes. We then combine this answer with the question to form a more specific statement. For instance, if the question is, is there a train in the picture? Please answer yes or no. The default model's response would be, yes, there is a train in the picture. We've also created two additional versions of our framework. One includes only the open set detector, and the other includes only the visual question answering, VQA, model. We've named these, default with detector, and default W, VQA, respectively. The default with detector version is designed to assess how the detector helps reduce object level hallucinations, specifically in terms of existence and count. The default W, VQA, version, on the other hand, is designed to evaluate how well our chosen VQA model provides attribute information. The first version achieves this by only providing object level information in the knowledge base, while the second version does so by providing attribute level information. We then compare these two versions with our full framework, which we've named Default Woodpecker, that uses both types of information. As shown in our figure on ablation studies, the improvements in existence and count mainly come from the open set detector, while the improvements in color are due to the VQA model. This aligns with our expectations, as we collect count information using the detector and gather specific attribute information, such as position and color, using the VQA model. As a result, our full model combines the strengths of both components and achieves the best results. To provide a clearer understanding of the correction results and the evaluation using GPT-4V, we provide a case study in our experimental evaluation section. We present the query and the MLLM response before and after correction, along with the scores and reasons given by GPT-4V. Next, we want to delve deeper into the performance of the correction process. Since there aren't many existing studies on measuring correction behavior, we've divided the results after correction into three categories. One, accuracy, correct answers that were maintained and incorrect answers that were corrected. Two, omission, incorrect responses that were not corrected. Three, mis correction, correct responses that were mistakenly altered. We've summarized the results of the default model on me and calculated these three metrics. As shown in our error analysis figure, our correction method achieves an accuracy of 79.2%, while the rates of omission and miscorrection remain relatively low. This suggests that our method can handle most cases without being overly confident.